Casting TC284 Flexible Foam. In today's video, we're going to cover the process of casting a self-skinning foam head, and then also we're going to cast a version using the same uh, flexible foam, but casting it with a skin in place first. Now to do this properly, ideally you want to use a silicone mold. And uh, the mold we're using is not going to uh, win any prizes. This is an old uh, silicone head mold of a screaming Mitch head. This is the 8030 silicone mold that we just made a very simple brush on mold uh, reinforced with a plaster banded shell that uh, we strapped together. And this, the nice thing about this kind of mold is we don't have to use any release. And that's really important for any finishing techniques that we use later on. We don't have to clean off any mold release in order to get the paint to stick. And some of you might already have seen some of the process we're going to do here. Uh, we've covered this extensively on our Instagram uh, page lately with a lot of pictures of uh, the progress of using this flexible foam. So if you don't check that out already, be sure to follow our Instagram page. Now the TC284 is a variable density flexible foam, which means that it actually has two different mix ratios. You can mix it 50A to 100B to get an eight pound density flexible foam, or we can get a more dense 13 pound density by using 30 parts A to 100 parts B. So you can play around with that and anything in between and get a variety of different densities and different feels out of that same foam product. And this is a great product for creating body parts and uh, weapon props and all kinds of things like that because it has a very nice thick skin on the surface. Now for this head prop, we're going to cast it using the eight pound density. So I'm measuring it out 50 parts A to 100 parts B. Now here I'm measuring out my B side first and I'm measuring out 500 grams of my B side, which of course means that I'll need 250 grams of the part A. Now before I add the A, I'm going to add some flesh tone pigment. And this is uh, one of the BJB flesh tone pigments. This is a really good just general purpose flesh tone, a nice medium flesh tone. And uh, it's very concentrated, so it doesn't take much to get a very convincing uh, base flesh tone. And you can adjust that a lot with other colors as well, but that's a good starting point for whatever kind of paint job you're going to do later on. Now once we've mixed in our flesh tone pigment to our part B, we're ready to add our part A. But that's a, a critical step to put that in the B first. And the reason is as soon as we add that part A, the clock starts ticking and, and the 284 is a fairly fast setting flexible foam. So you want to make sure you're prepared to move quickly and have your mold ready and strapped together before you add that part A. Now, as soon as we've added our A and we stir this up, we're going to be ready to pour this into the mold. And one of the things you'll see with this mold is it has a relatively small uh, opening that we're going to pour the foam into. And you'll find with self-skinning flexible foams, the more restriction you have on the, uh, on the mold, the better the skin quality on the surface of the part. So if you know going into the uh, mold making process that you're going to make something with self-skinning foam, it's a good idea to have a, a somewhat restricted uh, uh, vent or pour spout to uh, pour your material into so that the material gets compressed as it fills the, the mold. Because if it doesn't, if it has a very large opening, foam is going to move towards the path of least resistance. So if it has a very large opening, rather than uh, push out into the mold and form a nice skin, it's just going to go straight up out of the mold. So make sure when you're building your mold that you take that into account and you engineer your mold to build a little bit of compression on the foam as it's expanding inside the mold. And you'll find that you get much better results in the quality of skin. Now one of the things I'm doing there as soon as I've got the foam poured into the mold is I slosh it around to make sure it fills the ears and any of the thin areas, any undercut areas that the foam as it expands might actually just move past. You'll find that ears are very difficult to get to fill when you uh, pour expanding foam into a head mold. If it doesn't have the uh, right amount of back pressure or a good pathway into the ears, it's not going to fill the ears. So taking a few extra seconds there to slosh the liquid foam around inside the mold does help improve that surface quality of a flexible foam prop like this. 
Now, this particular foam demolds in about 30 minutes, sometimes faster than that, just depending on the uh, room temperature and the cross section of the part. And remember that foams, uh, if you've followed some of our other videos, you've heard us say this before, but uh, flexible foams especially really like warm temperatures. So ideally for good flexible foam parts, I recommend a, a room temperature environment of 75 to 80 degrees and a nice warm warm mold. Uh, if you are working in a cold environment, you, you'll find that you don't get as nice of a skin surface on your finished part. And now we have a screaming Mitch head ready for paint. Now we're going to cast another prop head and this particular one we're going to do a slightly different way. In this one we're going to cast up a skin of FP15. Now FP15 you can find that in the casting rubber section of our website and this is a polyurethane rubber that's a very fast setting translucent polyurethane rubber formula that's ideal for uh, skins on dummies and heads and bodies, all kinds of uh, props where Normally, just casting self-skinning foam by itself might result in a lot of voids on the surface. Sometimes when you're casting really large pieces like heads and shoulders, it's very difficult to get a perfect bubble-free part. So the way around that is to mix up a skin material like this FP15, which is uh, very simple to use. It's a one-to-one -one mix ratio by weight. And then we're going to add a little bit of flesh tone pigment to it. And what we're going to do is, since this is a very fast setting formula, we can either brush or slosh this into a mold to give ourselves a skin. And the FP15, the 15, stands for the uh, Shore A value, which this particular one is a fairly soft urethane rubber. So it's going to give us a nice, pliable, soft skin. And we're just going to slosh that around on the inside of our silicone mold first before we pour our flexible foam. Now it really helps to have a warm mold for this process because as it is, the FP15 has about a five minute working time and about a one hour demold at room temperature. But uh, when you're sloshing a mold like this around, it can get kind of messy, especially if it takes a really long time for it to set. So what I like to do is do this over a trash can and I like to warm up the mold so that it helps accelerate the material and cut down on how much time I have to slosh that around. Now, I mixed up way more of this FP15 than was necessary. Uh, in hindsight, I probably would have mixed up less than half of what I did here. This was 250 grams of part A and 250 grams of part B. And I probably could have gotten away with uh, probably 150 of A, 150 of B, maybe even less than that. So uh, remember that for a head size part like this, you could probably get away with two to 300 grams or less. It just depends on the thickness of the skin that you want on your final part. Now once we've uh, sloshed that skin around, we're ready to do the same thing we did with the previous head, except this time we're not going to have to be as particular about our flexible foam as far as its uh, skinning properties. We can uh, mix that up and pour it in. I still like to slosh it around though a little bit, just to make sure we don't have any voids or giant pockets between the flexible foam and the rubber skin. But it's real important to follow this up as soon as you can to make sure you get a really good bond between your flexible foam and your FP15 skin. Now once we put that all in, sloshed it around and let our foam completely rise and fill the mold, we're ready to let this sit for about 30 minutes and then we'll be ready for demold. Now a word about safety and ventilation. Uh, make sure that you wear gloves anytime you're handling uh, polyurethanes, especially polyurethane foams. They are very adhesive and little bits of foam on your hands will stay there for days once they're bonded to your skin. So make sure you wear gloves and use good ventilation. And uh, there are people that are sensitized to urethanes and urethane foams. If you're one of those people, I really recommend wearing a respirator with organic organic filters, but make sure you take proper precautions and have work in a very well ventilated area anytime you're working with flexible or rigid foams for that matter. Now this is about 35-40 minutes later and ready to uh, demold our part. And this time we'll have a, a head that has a urethane skin bonded to the flexible foam underneath. 
And the advantage to that approach is with a self-skinning foam, even a really good self-skinning foam, it's really difficult to uh, get a nice even skin thickness on a really large or complicated part. So by sloshing a skin around of FP15, that allows us to have a, a, one homogeneous skin that could be backed up with several layers of foam if need be, especially for complicated parts. Now once we have our cured urethane part ready to paint it and finish it, and to paint it, it's real important that you use a compatible paint that will bond to the surface. One of those uh, compatible paints is our clear flex paint. And this is a paint base that you can pigment with the Polycolors or the BJB 6800 series pigments. And it starts out white but dries clear. And it's water-based for a really easy cleanup. You can just run uh, distilled water through your airbrush to clean up after using it. So it's a very easy product to use, but I can't stress enough, this is a single component urethane. So uh, as with any urethane, especially a sprayed urethane, make sure you use really good ventilation and wear a respirator anytime you're spraying a polyurethane. Now I'll put the links to the flex paint as well as the polyurethane additives page and all of the things we're using in this video will be uh, linked in the video description. So be sure to check that out and uh, also check out some of our other mold making videos. We have a lot of other resources uh, that go into more depth about uh, flexible foam and uh, more painting techniques. For this particular video, I just wanted to wrap this up by just showing, uh, putting on a base coat of just kind of a dark flesh to uh, start off the paint job on our severed head. And a little bit of history about the Screaming Mitch head. Uh, Originally, when I made this years ago, some of you might uh, remember this head. Originally saw this uh, in a LifeCast video we made all the way back in 2009. And this head has been around. In fact, if you pay extra close attention, you might see it appear several times in the movie Machete. So a little bit of trivia for you there about the Screaming Mitch head and its history. So there you go. There's the process of casting flexible foam. A couple of different methods there for you. And remember that all of the products we use in this video are available on our web store. You can check them all out at brickintheyard.com. And of course, we'll put uh, product links in the video description. And also, for those of you who uh, want to keep track of some of the other projects we have going on in our shop and new techniques that we have, be sure to check us out on Instagram. You can find us on instagram.com slash biddymoldsupply.